Hey guys, welcome to the video. We're going to be talking about making your drums tighter. Now the reason we want to do this is because that will ultimately translate to having your drums sound bigger, fatter, so that they slap within the context of a mix. Now as you all know, the very first thing you have to do is just put out a good static mix. So we're going to work with volume and we're going to work with pan levels. I like to do that inside the mixer as it's all just kind of in front of me here. I'm going to press play solo some of the sources, and just try and get organized with these pieces. Here we go. All right, once you get a basic level mix, then you want to work with panning. In Logic, we have a couple of different ways that we can pan. How to access those different ways, you want to control click right here in the left channel strip inspector, control click, and you have access to not only stereo pan, but balance. What's the difference between both of those? I'm going to get into that in another video, but for now, just know that when you use stereo pan, you have more control. This is called true panning. When you use balance, this is kind of a more generic way of doing things. So in the context of this mix, I'm going to use both. So now we're looking to move things around. Since track number one is the main track, I'm not going to go ahead and pan that. This is something that I'm just going to kind of keep uh, as the basis of everything else. Let's listen to track number two. Okay, I like this, but it's very low. This is one of the reasons now that I'm going to add the enveloper. And this is something that I want you to add to every percussive element. Now, when we talk about an enveloper, we're really talking about the attack phase and the release phase of any signal. So this can be a piano, this can be a snare, it can be a vocal. But at its core, the enveloper is either A, shaving off the initial transient so from here to here you will be shaving off and so what that's going to do is it's going to soften and dampen the sound and sometimes that's just the thing you need for something to sit right in the mix so that's the attack phase now of course inversely it can also raise that up so if you need to, something to cut through the mix this is a great tool as well the second part of the enveloper is the release phase. Is it going to cut off right away? Or am I going to help prolong the release of the sound? If it's a cymbal, is it going to kind of sound out a little bit longer? If it's a piano, is it going to resonate a little bit longer? Go ahead and pull up the tool, pull up some drums, and start playing with all the different handles. And I know you're going to love it. All right, so notice the settings on the enveloper. And if you don't know where this is, you want to go to the audio insert, go to dynamic enveloper. All right, this enveloper here deals with the attack and the release of whatever the source is. In this case, we hear like the tambourine and various little percussive elements. So because it's so low, I can raise the volume, but there's another aspect that we can change which is just the attack right what if it sounds good enough like you like where it's sitting in the mix but you just want the initial attack to ring out this is where you would use the enveloper so listen to what it sounds like before the enveloper and then i'll start making my adjustments All right, so I like what's happening there. Now, this is uh, ear candy. Right? This is something I would consider to just be kind of additive. So I'm going to pan this over to the left. And again, I could have used the stereo pan. And this is really just something that 
is about taste, right? Sometimes it's going to sound just right. It's going to fit in the mix while you're using balance. Sometimes it's going to fit in the mix when you're using the stereo pan. Let's listen to the next part, blue sky percussion. Here we go. All right, kind of hard to hear. This is essentially just a glitch. So all together we get this. So this also sounds pretty good. I'm going to add another enveloper. And then maybe I'll shave off the attack. Let's see how that sounds. See, that's kind of nice right there because that first attack was a little bit cumbersome. It was a little bit bothersome. So then now I get to shave off the initial attack. And now this, this fits really nice in the mix. Now something else you can do if you want to just shave off a little bit more can play with the gate. I really love the FabFilter Pro G. So here, listen to just this before the gate and then after. Now, when it's out of context like this, you don't really hear that much of a change. You can hear that it's a lot shorter than it was before, but in the context of a mix can make a massive difference. Check it out. Something else you could have done to make that even a little bit tighter was to side chain that to one of these sources. We can do that next time, but for now, let's listen to the daylight percussion. Okay, I like this wood block sound. I think this is something we're gonna pan, let's see. Yeah, let's try moving this over to the right. So this is an instance where I wanna use stereo pan. And then now the idea is I'm gonna move both channels to the right this should create some definition. Let's see. Okay, that works for me. And then in terms of the settings, if, let me solo this by itself. If track four is isolated and I raise up the release, let's hear it. So that could be interesting as well, right? That could be almost another section if we wanted to. Let's listen. Yeah, so this can be the kind of thing where we hit Command A and then replicate the region. And then we duplicate track number four by hitting the duplicate button right up here. And then we drag this section down, the first four regions can have the enveloper on, so it sounds really tight, really clean in the mix. And then the second can have it off, or the other way around. So yeah, let's, uh, let's try that. All right, so this first four will sound tight, and then it'll sound a little bit looser here. Check it out. All right, so that's fun, right? You get that dynamic shift. And then with um, tracks number six and seven, I took the day and night percussion again inside the Apple Loop browser, and then I just split them up so I had a little bit more control over the volume. Yeah, so like I felt the conga for track seven was a little bit loud, so I separated it, brought the gain down, and it sounded a lot better. So let's listen here. Yeah, you see how on track number seven, my envelope where I shaved off all the initial attack. And so this is where this kind of work comes in handy, where you wanna take something down in a mix, not necessarily with volume, but just that initial transient. So I'm gonna go ahead, go into the mixer, create a group for all of these. 
uh, let me take this one off. All right, and then we're gonna listen before and after. So here's before. guys well i hope that helps you with your drums you can always get better you got to focus on what the next thing is i know that when i started making my drum sound tighter it made all the difference in the world if you like the content that i'm making go ahead and subscribe i will see you guys on the next one keep your frequency high